The Churches of Christ present Bible Talk. Who is Jesus? That's a question that could be answered in several different ways, but I want us to consider who or what Jesus said He was in the seven I Am statements recorded in John's Gospel. Each of these statements gives us insight into who Jesus is and what Jesus provides for us. Today we're going to focus on the third and fourth of these statements as Jesus said, I am the door and I am the Good Shepherd. I hope you'll stay tuned and join us for this study after this song of praise. Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to Bible Talk. It's with great joy that we come to you today ready to study the Word of God. As always, it's our utmost prayer that this study today will help you grow spiritually, encourage you, and perhaps even challenge you if need be. I want to personally thank you for giving me this opportunity to study God's Word with you today. Who are you? That's a question that's deeper than it first appears. On the cover, it might be easily answered with a name, but then on a deeper level, you could get into your job, your family, your education, and so forth. And then perhaps on its deepest level, the question gets to the matter of character. And the same is true when we ask the question, Who is Jesus? On the cover, that's a question that's easily answered. We might say, Well, Jesus is the Christ. On a deeper level, He's the son of Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, a carpenter by trade surrounded by a close group of followers that we call the disciples. As we begin to dig even deeper than that, we see that He's the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the eternal, divine, second person of the Godhead. But in addition to these answers, we would be wise to look at who or what Jesus said He is through the seven I Am statements that are recorded for us in John's account of the Gospel. See, each one of these statements tells us something about Christ and what He alone provides for us, what He alone has made available to all of mankind. In previous lessons, we've noticed the statements, I am the bread of life and I am the light of the world. But for our lesson today, we come to John 10, 
in verses 1 through 18 where two of these seven statements are found where here Jesus says, I am the door, and then he says, I am the good shepherd. I want to notice with you first today the setting of these statements. As we've done with each of these statements, it's important for us to study the context of the particular statement so that we might better grasp the background and what all's going on in the text. Let's read together first John 10 and verses 1 through 14. Beginning at verse 1, John writes, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, uh, but by another way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were uh, which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that ye might have life, and that ye might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Let's think about all that Jesus is saying here in this text and, and really what first leads up to this text. The events of this chapter, the events of what we've just read as they're recorded are the events following Jesus healing the man of his blindness. If you back up just one chapter to John chapter 9, remember that Jesus healed a man who was blind from birth and he did so on the Sabbath day, which as it always did, caused a, a stir among the, the Jews and specifically the Pharisees. And so the Pharisees are upset and they begin to claim that Jesus must not be of God or from God because he did not keep the Sabbath. We also find in John 9 that the people are living in fear of these religious leaders. In John 9 and verse 22, we're told that those who would confess that He was the Christ were to be put out of the synagogue. And so when the Pharisees come to question the parents of the man who'd been healed of his blindness, his parents won't even give an answer for what's going on because they are, are fearful of the Jews. They're fearful of being cast out of the synagogue. In verses 24 and 25 of John 9, they accuse Jesus of being a sinner. In verses 27 and 28, they carry an attitude and a disposition that says that they're greater than Jesus' disciples, that they're better than them. In fact, uh, verse 34, they display an attitude that really shows that, that they believe themselves to be beyond learning. Uh, I find one of the most humorous statements of John 9 where the blind man asked them the question, uh, are they so curious because they want to follow him as well? Well, no, that's not why they wanted to know. They considered themselves to be beyond Jesus, greater than Jesus, and accused Jesus himself of being a sinner. Jesus here sets the record straight by showing through these examples and stating that he is the door and he's the good, the good shepherd, the great shepherd. He sets the record straight in showing that they are the ones who are truly blind. And to illustrate that blindness, he tells them this parable. John 10, 1 through 5, as we read just a moment ago, where Jesus explains that He is the door and He is the place of safety. That's the backdrop of the text. The Jews have accused Jesus of not being from God, of being a sinner, of being inferior to them and unable to teach them while having through fear kept others from confessing Jesus as Christ. Let's notice number two today then, the symbols and the sense of what Jesus is saying when he says, I am the door and I am the shepherd. 
In the story itself, there are several figures that are used and it will help us in understanding the sentiment, the, the thought behind the symbols and what it is that Jesus was really saying. If we understand the symbols first, then that will help us to do that. And so when you think about a shepherd, Jesus says in this text, I am a shepherd. Some of the Bible's greatest figures were shepherds. Abel was a shepherd who offered that acceptable sacrifice unto God. Moses was a shepherd and uh, he was following his sheep the day that he encountered the bush that was burning and was not consumed and received his call to go to Egypt. David was a shepherd tending to his father's uh, flock. And of course, uh, the writer of the beautiful 23rd Psalm that writes about Christ as our shepherd. And so uh, then you think about the shepherds that were in the field at Jesus' birth. Some of the greatest figures in the Bible were shepherds. And now here's Jesus saying that he's a shepherd. When we think about what it means to be a shepherd, we know from these examples and from others that to shepherd is to love and to care for and to protect the sheep. That was their job. That was their their role. They were to watch after, to feed, to care for, to protect, and to provide for the flock. A second figure that's used in John chapter 10 is the sheepfold or the sheep coat, as some translations say. This particular place, a sheepfold, was a place where shepherds would bring their sheep for safekeeping overnight. And, and there would be only one means of entrance into this fold, into this this place of safety for the sheep, just one door. That then brings us to the symbol of the door. Jesus says, I am the door. And we understand that doors primarily have two functions. Doors permit and they restrict. In other words, a door is there, for example, the, the doors on our homes are there to restrict entrance from those that we do not want in our homes while permitting entrance into the home from those that we do. That's, that's its primary function, to permit and to restrict. We also understand that not all doors are created equally. You know, the, the old expression is, is that uh, you wouldn't have a screen door on a submarine. Why? Because it doesn't function that way. Right? Uh, you don't use a glass door for a security door. Why? Because it doesn't function that way. It'd be too easy to, to get in or to break. Uh, you don't, you, uh, the whole family doesn't try to enter the house through the doggy door because that's not its function. And so I think those are the, the primary aspects that we need to grasp in the symbolism of the door. It permits and restricts and it must be functional for its use, for its purpose. A fourth symbol that Jesus uses here is that of the hireling. A hireling uh, is different from a shepherd. See, a hireling is just a laborer. It's one who is paid. Uh, this individual has no real connection to the sheep or to the flock. For them, it's just about the money. For them, it's just a job that they take on and they do uh, for the earning of wages. That's different from the shepherd because the shepherd has a connection to the flock. The shepherd cares for and loves and cares for the flock. It's not just about money. It's about care and love and compassion. The thought and the meaning then behind these symbols tell us about what Jesus and the answer to the Pharisees in the previous chapter is all about. When we think about the sheep, we understand that we are the sheep. We represent the, the fold or the, the flock of God. And so Jesus here in the text applies a double figure to himself in saying that he is both the door and the good shepherd. As the door... It is Jesus that permits. See, He is the door of salvation. In Acts 2 and verse 47, the Lord added unto the church daily those that were being saved. The church is not something that you can join. It's not something that we take a vote on for candidates of membership. The only way for one to become a, a, a member of the body of Christ or the church is for Jesus to add you to that body. He is the door of salvation. He permits access to the place of safety. In Acts 4 and verse 12, we read that there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But not only as the door does Jesus permit, but as the door Jesus restricts. See, He's not only the door of salvation, but He's also the door of separation. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Jesus said that there would be those who would come to Him 
And, uh, and he said, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And there will be some who will say, Lord, did we not cast out devils in thy name and, and, uh, and do many wonderful works in thy name? And he said, I'll say unto them, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, Jesus is also the door of separation. He's also the dividing line between those that are saved and those that are lost based on whether or not they've been obedient to His will and His word. I know that we live in a time where it's popular to believe and to teach that there are no restrictions, that nobody's ever going to have to worry about being separated from God because God is love and, and God welcomes everybody. Well, God welcomes everyone to obey the gospel. But there's also a door of separation. In fact, in Matthew 25, where Jesus is depicted as the bridegroom going in to the wedding feast with his bride, that is, with the church. You remember those wise, uh, or those unwise, rather, uh, virgins that were not prepared came knocking on the door saying, let us in. And Jesus said, I know you not. Friends, that's a door of separation. A door that was closed by the bridegroom which is a representation of Christ. He is the door of salvation, the door that permits. But He's also the door of separation, the door that restricts. And then Jesus is also a protector. He is the door of security. See, doors provide us with peace of mind and security. When we go to bed at night and we lock our doors, we can sleep peacefully and soundly knowing that we're safe inside of our homes. Well, when Jesus says, I am the door, He's also talking about the protection and the provision that He provides for us. In Philippians 4 and verse 7, He promised to provide the peace of mind that comes from God and that passes all understanding. We have security in knowing that when we walk in the light, as He is in the light, that His blood continually cleanses us from our unrighteousness, 1 John 1 and verse 7. In Matthew 28 and verse 20, in Jesus giving the great commission, he gave this promise, Lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. Friends, what think, how thankful we should be for the security and the protection that Jesus provides as our Savior. Paul would say it this way, If God be for us, who can be against us? When Jesus said, I am the door, He was talking about being the door of salvation, the door of separation, and the door of security. But then what did he mean when he said, I am the good shepherd? As the good shepherd, we learn a great deal about our Lord. We learn first and foremost that he, he is trustworthy. You go back to verses 1 through 3 of John chapter 10, and, and Jesus talks about uh, being the one who allows them to enter in, that he opens the door for the sheep and leads them into a safe place. He says if, if someone seeks to do it another way, that individual is a thief and a robber. And so Jesus is the opposite of that. He's the antithesis to the thief and the robber. He's one whom we can trust to lead us and to guide us into the place of safety. Not only is He trustworthy, but He knows. Verse 3 talks about His knowing the sheep. He knows where we need to be. He knows what we need. And He knows us better than we know ourselves. In verses 4 and 5 of John 10, we read about His leadership as it talks about Him leading us into the sheepfold, into the place of safety. Think about what David said in Psalm 23 about the leadership of God. David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And He leads me. He leads me beside the still waters and into the good pastures. David was so satisfied with the leadership of the Lord that he said, My cup runneth over. I have more than I could ever desire because he leads me. Jesus, as the good shepherd, we can trust. He knows us. He leads us. And he also provides and sustains us. Verses 8 through 10 of John chapter 10. You look back at these verses and in John 8 he says, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall find pasture. Jesus says, I'm the one that provides eternal life and sustains that life for you with green pastures. And then, as the good shepherd, 
Jesus sacrifices for His sheep. This is the greatest distinction, by the way, between the shepherd and the hireling. See, the hireling, when danger comes, he'll run away and leave the sheep to be slaughtered by the wolves. But the shepherd will not do that. The shepherd will give his life for the sheep. And that's what Jesus says here. In verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Notice in verse 15, he says, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. In verse 17 he says, Therefore doth my Father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. And then in verse 18 he says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Four times in this text, in four different verses, Jesus says, I'm giving my life for the sheep. There's nobody better qualified to be the good shepherd than our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in contrast to that, the Pharisees are the hireling. See, for them it's just about the money. It's just about the honor, the prestige of men. They don't really care about the sheep. If they did, then they would have rejoiced when one of their own who had been blind from birth had been healed. They would have rejoiced to see the day of the Lord and the Messiah. But instead they've accused Him of being a sinner and of not being from God. In all of this, Jesus is showing all those who are listening, I'm not a sinner and I'm not inferior to these religious leaders. In fact, I am the way into the place of safety and salvation. I am the good shepherd who truly knows you, cares for you, and who gives my life for you. Follow me instead of these hirelings. Enter through me and you'll be saved. That's the symbolism and the sentiment of Jesus' two statements here, the two I am statements of John chapter 10. But Then number three, we need to notice the service. What is it then that we're to do with this text today? In making application from this encounter and from the words of our Lord, there's a few things to note. Number one, we need to note that Jesus is the way and the only way. Sadly, the Pope has recently stated that one doesn't have to believe in Christ to be saved, which is ridiculous because Jesus makes it clear here and through all the other I Am statements, by the way, that the only way into the fold, the only way into the church, the place of safety and salvation is through Him. Jesus says, I am the door. There's only one way to enter in. If you try to come in another way, you're a thief and a robber. There's only one way to come in to Christ and into the place of safety, and that's through Jesus. Additionally, it's important to note that verse 16 of John 10 reminds us that there is only one fold and only one shepherd. In verse 16, the text reads, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There are those in the religious world who would teach many folds. But Jesus says, I have one fold. And He's the one shepherd, the one way of that one fold. Number two, we need to notice the relationship between the shepherd and his sheep. Jesus says, I know my sheep and they know me. They know my voice and they follow me. What an amazing statement to consider. That Jesus knows us and that if we're truly His sheep, we know Him and His voice. We know His words and what he said to us. There are two questions that come to mind with that. The first is, would Jesus count us among his sheep? And the second one is, is how in tune are we with the words of our shepherd? Are we so in tune with Christ and his word that another would never be able to lead us astray? I hope that's the case. But then number three, we need to note that the abundant life is found in following the good shepherd. Jesus says here in John 10 and verse 10, I am come that you might have life and to have it more abundantly. The world would like for us to think that the best life is a life lived for self. But Jesus says the best life, the abundant life, is the life lived under the guidance of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Remember what David said in Psalm 23, My cup runneth over. That's the best life. That's the abundant life. A life that has been entered into through Christ and that allows Him to be our guide and master as the Good Shepherd. 
A final question is, at which door are we standing today? Are we standing at the door of salvation and security? Or are we looking at the door of separation? Friends, Jesus said, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. The question then is, is have you entered the fold? And is he your shepherd? If he's not today, I pray you'd make it right. By obeying the gospel or by repenting of sins, if you've already obeyed those initial commands to believe, repent, confess, and to be baptized. Thank you so much for tuning in again today. And I pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you. And God bless. Do you have any questions about the Bible? Are you searching for a place to worship God like you find in the Bible? Do you have questions about your eternity? Would you like to know more about God's plan for you? Let me encourage you to visit a Church of Christ near you today. And if you're interested in learning more about the Lord's Church, we also offer free material. For more information or if you would like to have a transcript or a copy of today's program, whether audio or video, please go to our website at www.bible-talk.org or you can email us at bible.talk at bible-talk.org You can also write to us at Bible Talk, P.O. Box 40, Fayette, Alabama, 35555. Simply include the program number and we'll be happy to send that to you completely free of charge. Thank you again for tuning in and may God bless you richly in your walk with Him.